You know, there's an achievement in Mortal Kombat for spilling 10,000 pints of blood. Pretty sure this movie would have gotten that a few times over. Seriously, it's crazy. <laughs> 300 Rise of an Empire. So 300 Rise of an Empire is a sequel to 300? When I saw they were making this, I was like, do they really have to make that? I mean, it's, it's not even based on source material, but I found out it's actually based on Frank Miller's working project Xerxes, which expands the world of 300 and shows more about Xerxes. So I was like, oh, okay, it has source material. I'm not saying not being based on source material is gonna make it shit. I'm just saying I had a little more faith in the movie after I found out about that, but I still went into this movie cautious and I walked out of this movie pretty happy. First of all, this movie being a sequel to 300 doesn't actually explain it. It's more of a parallel event. Rise of an Empire starts out before 300 and then 300's happening while this movie's taking place. And then 300 Rise of an Empire ends after 300. It's like 300's wedged in the middle of this whole thing, but this movie's actually spans a longer amount of time. First of all, you have all the action you had in 300, but it's a different tone. The Spartans were cool to watch because they're like Klingons. They're like, death and glory, and we die in the battlefield with honor, and that is glorious. Sparta! The Athenians aren't really like that. They're like, oh, my friend died. This sucks ass. I don't like my friend dying in the battlefield. This is shit. It's cool to look up to the Spartans, but the other Greeks, they're more relatable. It's like, yeah, I would react more like that if my friend died in the battlefield. I wouldn't be like, oh. He's the lucky one. And the main guy in this movie, Themistocles, I believe that's how you say his name, Themistocles? Themistocles? I just saw the movie, I can't remember. It's a Greek name. They are difficult. I hope I'm not travolting right here, but I believe it's Themistocles. Adel Gazim. that was weird. This dude is badass. These guys don't fight with the phalanx like the Spartans, so this guy just charges in. He, he reminds me of Achilles. There's just no stopping this guy. This guy, he's got all the moves. And we have ourselves a really vicious bitch in this movie, played by Eva Green. This chick, she was awesome. She was a great villain. She was sexy. She was the biggest cunt bag this side of Lena Headey from Dread. It's true. If that word offends you, I'm sorry. But if you watch this movie, you will walk out going, yeah, she was a cunt. It's just the word that describes her. She was so good at it. I like a good villain in a movie. I guess you can look at 300 and say, well, that's the simple approach. It has a simple lesson. Freedom is worth fighting for and worth dying for. 300 Rise of an Empire has a different lesson. And that is hell hath no fury like a woman scorned who possesses a large Persian naval army army and unlimited resources. The things that bothered me about this movie is first of all, the green screen is a lot more noticeable in this. There were a couple times where you see the green haze around Themistocles' beard. You're like, oh man, this is millions of dollars. That's supposed to happen with me because I'm just me on YouTube, not Hollywood movies. And the blood looked fake. The blood's supposed to look fake because it's stylistic and it's gonna be CGI blood flying everywhere. That it was that way in 300 also, but I thought the blood in 300 looked realer than 300 Rise of an Empire. And, and this shouldn't bother me, but when movies do this, it does. Everything is tied together. You see people in this movie that are tied to the first 300 movies somehow. Are you telling me that this situation and this person in this movie be somehow tied back to that person in the last movie. It's like that with a lot of people. I'm like, the world's not that small. It's okay to make up characters and say, oh, yeah, well, this person just had to do with this. Has nothing to do with the last movie. It doesn't have to. Granted, I like Easter eggs, so that's fine. We're here to have fun. It's a 300 movie. You're not supposed to take it too seriously. So in the end, 300 Rise of an Empire was a really fun movie. It held to the same feeling as the first 300 movie, but it had its own angle that it took showing the Greeks actually doing their thing. It had a great hero. It had a great villain. I walked out of this movie going, that was pretty cool. I will say 300 Rise of an Empire is a great time. No alcohol required. I'd actually like to see a super edit of 300. Like have 300 Rise of an Empire with 300 edited into it. So it's actually one big movie bouncing back and forth between the two movies. It's like one three and a half hour epic. That'd be pretty sweet. You know, it would be. All right, so 300 Rise of an Empire. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.